not ever be compared favourably with you, St. Bob. <laughs> but on this occasion, I'll, I'll take it to, uh, uh, to our amazing chief scientist, uh, Alan. We are blessed to have you. Uh, and you contribute enormously, as do all of your colleagues at the national level. And to, to Glenn and Angus and uh, all of the leadership and fellows of uh, ACOLA, you, you bring together so much of the national intellectual capacity. And most importantly, it's about harnessing it and applying it to the betterment of all Australians. And that's an economic better, betterment. But above all else, it's quality of health, quality of life, quality of environment all brought together. It is the very notion of a national mission of improving the way we live individually and collectively. Uh, to uh, Catherine North and uh, your leadership of the Murdoch Children's Research Institute, and uh, it's not just research, it's taking care of beautiful young children such as uh, Louis here, and we'll hear more from yourself and Louis's parents about Louis's journey later on and what that actually means in terms of precision medicine. Uh, precision medicine only matters, only matters when it's about Louis and other children and other people and their lives. And then to Bob Williamson and to all of those involved with uh, the steering group and the advisory committee in terms of today's report on the future of precision medicine, I want to acknowledge and thank you and those that see the future. Now, to be here at Eureka, uh, like Al and I have a little confession, this is my first visit to uh, not just the 89th floor here at Eureka, uh, but to Eureka Tower. And uh, you look out and you see a physical vision of what Melbourne is and what <coughs> Melbourne can be. Uh, this morning I also dropped my uh, daughter at school for her first day in senior school. And uh, I saw a vision of our family's life and the future there. And uh, it was a very uplifting and positive vision. And this report is a national vision, which joins the, the physical and the familial. And it's a national vision about how we can give new hope and new opportunities for families, for individuals in their battles with cancer, their battles with uh, uh, chronic disease, their battles with genetic conditions as we go forward. And we are on the cusp of one of the great breakthroughs in medical treatment in our health systems, in individual care uh, of the last century. When you think of Australia and uh, medical research, we have an extraordinary history. Uh, from uh, Florey to McFarlane Burnett, uh, Gustav Nossel, Ian Fraser, uh, Fiona Stanley, Fiona Wood, Elizabeth Blackburn. These are global giants who developed and grew here in Australia. And our contribution to medical research and medical science around the world has outweighed our national population many, many fold. But at this moment, we are also engaged in great global contemporary leadership. Um, you look at what's being done uh, with uh, Gardasil in, in Brisbane, uh, with uh, Saluda and pain, uh, pain management in Sydney, with Veneta Clax uh, here at Bolton and Eliza Hall Institute and the treatment of uh, uh, leukaemia and lymphoma uh, here in Melbourne. And you can see that Australian researchers are right at the forefront. But we are similarly there with our genetic research and our genomics focus. But all of this becomes real when it's translated to individuals. And uh, we have responsibility for the Zero Childhood Cancer Initiative as a, a federal program. It's about ensuring that uh, Children with uh, life-threatening cancers uh, with a less than 30% survival rate will all, every one of them, have access to sequencing and, if, if uh, appropriate, clinical trials. As part of that, before the program had really begun, just as it was being developed, uh, I went to uh, the Sydney Children's Hospital and uh, there was a little girl there, Ellie, and uh, she had been on a very dark path 
12 months old, a thoracic cancer which had spread in a huge tumour which was pressing on both the heart and the lungs. She had been put on a, uh, uh, put on a ventilator and her parents had been told to prepare for the worst. But in the earliest stages of this initiative, which parallels the work that Catherine and others are doing at the Murdoch Institute, she had her uh, DNA sequenced. They discovered a very rare genetic condition, uh, to the extent that it was one of only 30 or so around the world. Uh, through the data banks, they were able to discover uh, more so that there was an emerging drug just being trialled with a handful of patients. Clini uh, clinical capacity was, uh, was recognised, compassionate access was secured, the drug was air freighted to Australia, and through this program, Ellie was given access. Over the course of uh, a few weeks, the tumour reduced by 90%. And the day that I arrived was the day that she was taken off the ventilator. When I returned uh, a few weeks later with the Prime Minister to the precinct, was the day that Ellie was allowed out of hospital and returned home with her parents. So if precision medicine means anything, it's about Louis and it's about Ellie and it's about individual children. It's not a concept which is amorphous, it's about saving lives and protecting lives. And it comes in that grand Australian tradition. It's real and it's human and it's about our best science and our best selves coming together. For us, medical research is one of our four great national pillars, along with primary care, along with hospitals uh, and improving those, mental health and preventive health and medical research. As part of that, the Medical Research Future Fund is complementing what we're doing with the National Health and Medical Research Council and it's complementing what we're doing with the Biomedical Translation Fund. And within the Medical Research Future Fund, our great national missions are one of the, compo uh, the components. Patients and the new Rare Cancers, Rare Diseases program, of which we've just announced 19 major projects and $26 million of first round funding only last week. Uh, the focus on researchers and clinical uh, fellowships, but also frontier science on translation, but then the national missions. And uh, what we are now considering coming out of this report and yesterday's Innovation and Science Australia report is a great national genomics mission. There's more work to be done but I'm confident that over the course of this year uh, we will find ourselves in a position where Australia can become a global leader, a global leader building on what we already have in terms of precision medicine. And what does that mean? It means that we will do three things. One is the research to back the work of Catherine and Bob and the Garvin and so many other great institutes and researchers and universities in Australia. Two, that it rolls out to practical testing of those people who will seek the testing, firstly for the high risk categories, whether it's in terms of family history, whether it's in terms of early uh, conditions or undiagnosed circumstances, um, as we've seen in Louis's case, or unconfirmed circumstances. Um, and thirdly, treatment, being able to take these precise molecular diagnoses and create treatments that will save lives, protect lives and improve lives. At the same time, for Australia, it's an enormous investment, job creation and wealth creation opportunity. I have no doubt uh, that over the course of the period through to 2030, Australia can be, pound for pound, the world leader in genomic medicine and therefore able to deliver better outcomes for our population and for our economy. And this report, uh, the ACOLA report, The Future of Precision Medicine in Australia, is the blueprint as to how to do that. So I am honoured and delighted to officially launch the Australian Council of Learned Academies report Future of Precision Medicine in Australia.